And if you point that out to them, they go, really, that happens? Yeah, it does. So the media's your friend. You just got to play the game, all right? In fact, you know what? I'm going to make y'all practice this. Let's say those words again. Say them with me. The other side is radical, radical. extremist, discriminatory, and racist. And racist. And racist. You're darn right. All right. When they talk about guns, and I can't remember, I've talked to so many people at this, this event tonight. One thing that we do hear from the other side that, that's almost difficult to counter, frankly, it's kind of difficult to make the argument because the other side is such an emotional argument because they, they really do think that the gun animates itself and becomes part of the, I mean, they do. They genuinely do. They think guns are evil. I mean, to me, I've got to tell you, you know, everybody thinks, everybody thinks I'm the big gunny. I'm really not into guns one way or the other. I couldn't care less. To me, it's a tool. It's to, honest to God, to me, it is no different than a chainsaw. You know, it's, it's a very effective tool when it's used properly. But I get guys come up to me and they say, oh, well, I got this AR-59M1 thing, you know. I don't have a clue what y'all are talking about, guys. I genuinely don't. I don't know. I, I don't care. I support your right to carry whatever you want to carry. I don't care. But the fact of the matter is, it does boil down to that basic right. And when these little media people or any of your friends out there think that it's the gun, point this out to them. Let's think about this for a few minutes. Since 91, these, these dreadful shootings have been occurring with kind of frightening regularity. Yes? Think about where they've occurred. Okay, they, they've occurred at Columbine. Oh, wait a minute. That couldn't happen because guns aren't allowed in schools. Let's see, they occurred at a Jewish daycare center. Oh, no, 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 wait, no, that couldn't happen because uh, guns are not allowed at the daycare center. Oh, post office, whoop, no, post offices, that couldn't be there because they're not allowed there. Oh, universities. By the way, I've tried to pass a bill several times that would allow it at universities and everybody thought I was crazy back then. Now the feds are talking about it. Oh no, it couldn't happen at universities. Guns aren't allowed there. If guns are the problem, then explain to me why these things don't happen at places where there are thousands of guns in the hands of at least hundreds of law-abiding citizens like here, <laughs> or at the dreaded gun show, or at NRA conventions. Why don't those things happen there? I will tell you in Texas, and I have beefed about this for years. We have created, and many other states have created, a shopping list for madmen. I don't even like going to those places anymore because all I know is it takes one crazy. And they said, well, you know, somebody in there with a gun or, or a handful of people in here with guns isn't going to keep somebody from coming in and shooting people because he'll have the only surprise. You know what? They're right. But whoever comes in and does that, they're going to get how many people? Maybe two, maybe three. They sure as heck aren't going to kill 30 people in here right. before they've got about 30 holes in them. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't seem fixed at all. It doesn't fix at all. But it, there's also that huge deterrent factor because people that do that sort of thing, what are they looking for? They're, they're, looking, they're looking for a big body bag count. So they're not going to go to those places. They're not going to come in here. They're not going to go to the gun show. They're not going to go to the NRA convention. With, without exception, they have gone to the places where they know they can shoot people like fish in a barrel. Now, I bet you there's, and I, I'm going to pick on the women here for a minute. I bet you there, there's a few women in here. Maybe, maybe some of you guys have girlfriends or wives at home that didn't even want to come tonight. And if you do, I just want you to tell them this. Share this with them if you could. I want you to try to tell them about being in a cafeteria with their family. Now see, things have changed for me because I'm married now and have two children. I have a 12-year-old and a 9-year-old. Imagine, if you will, as you speak to your wife or girlfriend, imagine being in that same scenario, honey, with your two-year-old and three-year-old behind you. And as the gunman is walking around, no remorse, black eyes, you can't reason with this person. And as that gunman is leveling his weapon 
on your two-year-old's forehead. Even if you've chosen not to have a gun, don't you, don't you hope that the guy behind you has one and knows how to use it at that point? I've got to tell you, when I think about that with my kids now, I get physically ill when I, when I think about being in that scenario with no opportunity, no chance to protect myself and my children. I will leave you with one last thought. In hindsight, that decision I made about leaving my gun in the car to comply with Texas law, I'd much rather be sitting in jail right now with a felony offense on my head and have my parents alive to know their grandchildren. With that, I will end my speech. I was asked to open it to a few questions. I know it's already been a long evening. I, I would like to say, Mike, before you run up here, um, I speak to a lot of different groups, and your group really has it together, and that's that really heartens me, because sometimes you do feel like you're kind of a lone voice. It's so good to be in a group. I love, now don't get me wrong, I love speaking to the other side, because I figure maybe I can change a couple of minds, but it sure is good to be in a group of mostly like-minded individuals and know that you all are out there fighting this fight. And I want to thank you for doing the work that you're doing up here. I know it's an uphill battle, and guess what? The battle will never end. But I want to thank you for what you do. You know, this really should be a very left brain thing. We should be able to go in and state the facts. But everybody, I don't care how left brain you are, I don't care if you're a CPA, very left brain people, when it comes to the legislators still make their real decisions right here. They make it in their gut. And the statistics are something.